Hey, this is Sam Escovich from Ars Technica, and check out my little spaceship that I'm hanging out in. This is the hub opening spot for the game Strafe, which we are totally going to play and also totally going to die in. Strafe is a throwback to the days of Quake, as in that very early era of 32-bit uh, polygonal first-person shooters when we were elevating from the fake 3D of games like Doom and Duke Nukem, and you can argue about fake 3D, but Duke Nukem was totally fake 3D, to the fully polygonal, kinda sorta voxel -y look of Quake in games like that from about 95, 96, 97, back when your Voodoo 3D card was essential for playing computer games. So, what we have here is that sort of era combined with the more modern, uh, roguelike aspect, or roguelite, depending on how you look at it, of randomly generated, super hard uh, runs. So let's start one. Here we are, hanging out. Uh, I am mouse and keyboarding, because you're going to want to be very quick with this. Uh, we have a choice of three guns before we begin our run. Shotgun, machine gun, and rail gun. We're going to start with a shoddy. So grab that. We're chilling out on a relatively peaceful spaceship. Uh, there is a teleporter in range. Perhaps we're flying to there, to that uh, planet. There is kind of sort of lore and story going on, uh, but mostly nothing important. You are just trying to figure out what the heck happened on an abandoned space station where monsters have gone amok. This is not the place where anything of consequence is happening. No, we are heading into this teleporter in which we are to a place called the Icarus. It always starts this way, and there's always a dead dude, and whenever you shoot him, he always gives you a coin. You take the coin, you take a little ammo, there's really nothing interesting behind you, but ahead of you is where the fun begins. Look at that thing, what are you? Oh hey, just rock right up to me, little monkeyish man. Oh, and the music begins when you take that first shot. So, we are beginning the first uh, randomly generated run of all of this. I'm going to turn the volume down in my own world. Um, and we're going to let these little creatures come at me. There's a little bit of money right there. And the object is to beat every level and get as far as you can. I haven't gotten very hard, far. It's a very hard game. Um, and most of the AI that's been randomly generated in this world is pretty simple. Things just come out right at you. You do have to reload in this game, unlike your Doom or Duke Nukem games. So sometimes the safest thing is to stand still when a bunch of enemies come at you. And hope that you don't run out of ammo. But look, I've already lost a little bit of shield. And that might not seem like a big deal. I always lost a little shield, but shields are very rare. We're going to go ahead and reload, and we're going to use our ultimate fire on that little laser shooting dude. One more. Head goes away. Uh, so you see right here, I have already stained this opening corridor with a lot of oxalated blood. And the corpses just stay. So... That's certainly something that you couldn't have done with an older processor. Everything else, yes. This is all incredibly simple in terms of geometry and pixelization. We also have some sort of little monkey guy up there. Let's see if I can't get him. Those dudes are a little tougher, and I've gotten the attention of some... Oh, there is a guy. Load. And that is where I'm not just standing still. That is, the game has monster closets and other random monster appearance sort of things. Where once certain monsters know that you're in the area, they beeline for you pretty harshly. So, um, let's see if we can't take that guy out. With a little bit of my special attack home. Explodey. And a chest. Uh, we currently have now 2275 of the game's scrap currency, uh, which we can use to buy uh, upgrades eventually. There's a monster plug right there. Got both those somehow. In the monster closet, no, you know it's monster closet because it's red. Okay. Now, you'll notice 
I'm not really going crazy here, rushing around in the speed run, uh, because I'm just trying to take my time to stay alive. Uh, this game is so hard, and the first thing you're going to learn is that going fast will get you killed. Uh, so I'm taking my time, which means the enemy seems simple. Also, I'm grabbing these little items. Uh, if I'm correct, this will make uh, perhaps my bullets more powerful. The bonuses for these random crate uh, things are never totally spelled out. Let's see if I can find another path down there. If I go down there, could be monsters waiting for me immediately. It's usually better to find a way to go where you can sort of see where you're going. And you can drop a little bit without taking damage, but not too far. Uh, I also found uh, a free random gun and a barrel. So you grab that barrel, see that guy there. Boom, there goes the dynamite. Way. That's a lot of them. That one didn't go so well. That one actually hurt me. So I'm already down most of my armor. Uh, if you can get your health and your armor regenerated in different ways. It costs money to regenerate um, armor, and you have to find random food pickups for the health. And those just don't make so, so frequent. Anyway, uh, this opening sequence is kind of similar looking to all the other ones that have Jun generated, but they all have just enough of a different feel, in my opinion, uh, that you sort of don't know where monsters are necessarily coming from. You kind of get the sense, okay, we're going to have three kind of bad guys. Two of them shoot lasers, one of them does not, some of them have armor, and ultimately it's about that feeling of wherever you go, monsters and quick reaction shooting are going to happen. So that's sort of the first thing I like, is that every time I'm playing, certain things are predictable, but a mix of different geometry and different monster location uh, catches me by surprise in a way that I enjoy. I don't know if that gave me money or a key. Sometimes that box will have an item. I think that's ammo. It sure is. You have to choose carefully when you reload, because... Uh, it takes up an entire clip to reload whether you need uh, one more bullet or a full bullet. So, we're sort of encouraged by the way this, the game works. And then another weapon there. I'll wait to get that though. We passed something very important you might have noticed. Which was a machine that could give me more armor. However, I don't have 6,000, which means I can only get a tiny bit of armor. So I can get it. I can show you how paltry it is. Only 20 armor. I could have gotten 50 armor if I'd saved my money. Oh, apparently I've already been here. Judging by all of the blood. Now I'm being very careful. Every second run starts with this sort of openish corridor. I've never seen that little light before. It doesn't go boom. Did that attracted attention. No. And it's very random from there. So we have a box. It has no items in it. However, it does have what appears to be the N64 version of Strain. As evidenced by that cartridge, but I can't pick it up. But it has an S on the other side. Bye. We also have 20 health here. We'll be back for that once I lose some energy in the very near future. Let's go for this. And wow, I'm gonna need all that health already. Hopefully, I'm not gonna be shot at while I do this. I'm just gonna punch this thing. It's getting louder. There it goes. Now we're just punching a bunch. Don't know. Oh, I think I just got an upgraded shotgun of some sort. I'm off the behind me. Notice I'm not using my alternate fire very much because I'm bad at picking things. Now I'm down to 19. Desperate need for it. Okay.
look, it's Bluffenstein. And remember earlier when I shot that dude to get a coin? Uh oh. Oh, oh god. We are so close to getting money. Five health, we have money. There it is. Luftenstein! Does that look like anything you've seen before? Mission, exterminate enemy pilots before they take to the air. Um, my mouse doesn't do anything other than lucky shoot bullets. Lucky me. Alright, so we got nine pilots to shoot. I can't strafe. Hilarious, since the game is called strafe. But now I just have to go through this terrible... Procedurally generated low color maze and shoot at pilots. Um, this appears to be a crossover with the indie game Luftenstein. I think that's the name of it. There we go. That's a lot of pilots down. Five. And. Success! I get a ribbon. And what that unlocks for me. A bunch of power-ups and items. Which I believe... Now I can hold eight bullets per clip. That again. Just to see what's happening. Shoot! Dude, that guy is around here. Created a little glitch there. Good job. We now have three health. All going according to plan. Oh, the red key just opened the door already. And I'm dead. So what was that? 30 minutes. And my death. Ugh. I, I have a good time playing it. I like diving in and having something feel like Quake without having to just replay the old levels and know exactly where the monsters are coming from. I like that sensation that things could go really awry out of nowhere inside of kind of a comfortable power fantasy. So I'm alternating between feeling like a total 90s first-person shooter cheese ball action badass and then feeling like I'm completely up in the corner. It's like watching the movie Aliens. I suppose, in terms of what I like and what I'm appreciating about it. So I'm really enjoying my time with it. It comes out on the 9th of May. That's a Tuesday. This was a Kickstarter where they said they were going to make it feel like Quake and have it be randomly generated every time. And I will say, I like how the ge ge geometry of these randomly generated levels flows with the different kind of monsters. And I would like to be good enough that I could get further and find the other monsters in the game. But even just kind of replaying the simple stuff over and over, I've had fun. Am I going to be playing this forever? I don't know. But am I going to have this be a regular part of my I just want to feel some action real fast rotation? Yeah. I actually think it's a, right there with Shadow Warrior 2 in terms of that sort of jump into an FPS, have some random stuff, have some satisfying battling, and then get right on out and move on. So this is Sam Iskovich from Ars Technica getting killed over and over in Strafe and signing off. Have a good one.